If you're a power add-on user in Blender and you want to maximize the efficiency of your hard surface workflow, you're going to love this video because I'm about to show you five really deeply hidden tricks with hard ops, box cutter and machine tools that you probably don't know about. And they're going to save you not just a shit ton of time, but also a lot of money on therapy. So let's get started. Now, the first tip is going to be set origin, and it's a really interesting, you know, interesting tool. It's a bit fiddly, so pay attention because it's tricky, right? So I'm going to select this and, you know, this edge here, create something like that. And I'm going to cut this with a box cutter at a really odd angle. So let me grab this uh, view, um, view cut here and I'm going to run this cut here like that. Press space, right? And let me just fix this um, sheeting a bit. There we go. Let me recover the cutter. And also we want to shift the bull to cut. I mean to slice and now you see we have a problem right this cube has a origin point in here but so does this they kind of share the origin point because technically it's, it's two cubes so you can see here that blender created two cubes one of them is basically an intersection and the other one is a boolean difference because that's how it, you know slash boolean works so if you're gonna go here that's technically an intersection between the boolean and the cube right because if i'm going to go to local view it's an intersection. If I'm going to go to edit mode, I can see the whole cube, right? Makes sense? Cool. So now the trick is that because it's an intersection and because it's a live Boolean, you know, the origin point will stay here because Blender thinks this is still the whole mesh because that's an illusion what you see here. If I go to edit mode, the whole mesh is actually this cube with this cut, right? So even if I move the origin point to geometry using machine tools, it's going to move just a little bit up because you need to think now, this cube is missing this intersection. So there's a little bit more verts and edges on the top, which is why the origin point shifts a little bit to the top. But that's it. it you, there's no way you can move this origin point automatically to any of these, uh, of these faces because they don't fucking exist, right? So what do you do? Well, that's where hard ops comes in. So watch this. So now with this cut selected, go to mesh tools and you want to go to set origin. Now, when you hover over, you're going to see dots, right? And you're also going to see this darker dot, which denotes current position of the origin point, right? So what you want to do now is you want to move the origin point up to, you know, to this, to this uh, cut. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to slice this across. Now you can see if you press H additional menu here, but I'm going to show you how to use it. So you click and hold your left mouse button. It's important you hold it. You drag your mouse all across here. And now you can see that the origin point shifted to the corner there, including the rotation. You can see rotation too, right? So rotation now is going at an angle and, and the origin point is in the corner. We want to shift it to the middle. So you can see in the menu, if you press F, you can move it to the middle. And now I'm going to actually release that and set my origin point here in the middle. But we still have a problem with the rotation because if I press Alt X for the mirror, it's still fucking wonky, right? It, it didn't really do much for us, okay? So now we need to set the rotation. So how do you do it? Well, we go back to the tool and we go to set origin. And now we're going to draw from here. So from the origin point all the way down here, and we're going to press R for rotation and release. And now you got the rotation set and origin point set exactly where you want it. So now if I'm going to turn this thing off and I'm going to make sure that my uh, cut is going along the nearest edge. If I'm going to be cutting this here with my boolean, I can press 1 to mirror this across the shape to the other side. Because if you didn't know, right, let me just borrow this cube here. If you didn't know, you can mirror cutters using uh, 1 to 3. So watch, 1, 2, 3. It's going to mirror them across all axes. And you can turn them off as well if you want to, right? So when you're working on cuts like that and you want to maintain, you know, um, symmetry across the across the cuts, that's the only way to do it. Like, for example, here, if I run this boolean here like this and shift it to life, I can mirror this across the shape now because this shape and this orientation, this rotation here is correct. So select that, shift select that, alt X and mirror across and you got perfect cut in here in the middle. Do you see what I mean? So that is how you do it. Okay. You can also do it in one go by pressing shift. 
So you can set origin, press shift, and then, and then rotation, but sometimes it doesn't work. So I would just suggest going in two steps. So first set the origin and then set the rotation, okay? Now, second trick is gonna be with box cutters. So let's say that I have a cut here and I don't know, another cut here like this, and maybe, you know, something like that. And I'm gonna mirror this to the other side and I'm gonna apply the mirror. So operations multiply, right? And let's say that I wanted to have this cut on another side or another another place of this on this mesh, you know, somewhere else, right? Really easy. What you want to do is you want to let me just uh, make sure that I'm aligned here to Shift V and longest edge. By the way, if your alignment of the cutter doesn't work, simply press Shift V and change it in here. Either longest edge or nearest edge. Run the cutter here. Make sure you're going to boolean this whole thing. Press Y, changes to black click with the left mouse button and now you extracted this cut so now you can run it on another side of your mesh like this peachy isn't it so there you go next is going to be really cool trick with taper and lattice it's gonna build into one tool but it's really clever so watch this if i'm going to have another cut here like that right so let me just go with a regular cut okay and I'm going to move this one somewhere here just for fun, right? And I'm going to, I don't know, create a fucking bevel in here. And I'm going to, you know, create another cut here on top of this, okay? So something like this, right? And then we're going to mirror this to make it, you know, symmetrical. And let's keep it live, okay? So this is a live boolean. Live boolean, live mirror. We can even have a live bevel here, you know, no problem, right? So let's do that. Now let's say that I wanted to taper this face or scale it down like this. But with the boolean, remember, boolean cut is live. I can't do it because this happens. So what do you do? Well, you use the taper tool. So you go here to mesh tools. You go to taper deform. And now you can taper. Now you can also scroll your mouse to change the axis on the way to taper. Which, look what happens. It actually tapers, pulling the boolean proportionally to the taper, which is fucking fantastic. But that's not the best part. The best part is that it's actually live. So if I go to edit mode, I'm back in a, you know, in a cube state. It's a modifier. So I can, for example, do something like this. So now what you can do, you can go here to, uh, by the way, this breakage of the shading here is caused by, uh, by the bevel. So don't worry about that. What you can do now, you can go to the modifiers and you can go to this lattice and you can see there is a taper modifier here. You can actually change the size of this taper or strength of this taper back to zero or to whatever percentage you want. So you can actually adjust it later on to whatever you want. And of course, obviously, because it's, you know, hard ups, you can keep slicing this shit. I mean, it doesn't really, you know, it's not being phased by anything, right? So that's a really, really cool way of working. So there you go. Uh, that's a taper tool. Now, the last tool I'm going to show you with box cutter and hard ups is going to be extract face. This tool allows you to extract a face that doesn't exist. Now, let me explain. So, if I have a cutter here, right? These faces don't exist. All these four faces. One, two, three, four. They don't exist. If I go to edit mode, they don't exist. It's just a cube. It's an illusion, right? So, if I wanted to use these faces to modify, you know, the inside of this cut, I would need to recover the cutter and use faces of that cutter, which is a lot of work. So what I can do is I can go to Q and Mesh Tools and Face Extract, select the faces I want with holding shift or holding control. Then you press space bar to approve that. You can go either inside or outside. Let's go inside, actually let's go outside and click and you can, you know, start doing that thing, right? Or you can press A and revert it do something like this right uh, let's say we're gonna approve that cool so we got that and you can actually grab this cutter here and you can ap apply the solidification and you can keep adjusting it so I could keep playing with these edges uh, you know here like this which is really really cool right and by the way this modifier here you know is still live right so I can still move it adjust it I can do that if I want to I can you know grab these and bevel them here and do this. This is still all live, including the other modifiers, so including this one. This one is still live as well, right? So this is extremely powerful, um, you know, usage of booleans. And 
good luck doing this with vanilla blender it's just gonna take a lot of time right so there you go and the last tip i'm gonna show you is gonna be with machine tools and that thing is really powerful when you really need it okay so let's say you got a cube here and i'm gonna move this cube somewhere here and rotate it okay now if i'm going to use a mirror on this one across the origin point obviously it's going to be mirroring across the origin point and the local rotation which is basically this one but what for example i i don't know applied rotation and my rotation now is actually global which means the origin point rotation has reset to global and you know i don't have any more local orientation so what you can do you can change the rotation of the written point using cursor via machine tools so let me show you so if i'm going to move this cursor to select it you can see that the cursor will move but uh, it will inherit you know the the global orientation because origin point has a global orientation but if i'm going to select the face the face has a normal orientation which is a bit different right so what will happens to to the uh, axis of this um, cursor when i'm going to move it to the face boom now it's actually inheriting rotation of the face now in vanilla blender you can't do that right because the cursor will maintain the orientation now if you want it to maintain the orientation you have to hold out so if i'm going to switch back to uh, go to geometry so sorry uh, go to select it and i want to move this cursor to the face without it changing orientation or rotation i press shift s and i hold out and i move it to face and now it moved to face but without changing orientation and rotation, right? If I do this again, boom, switched. So now I can move the origin point to my cursor, right? So shift S and move it to cursor. And now I got a custom orientation back. So now what you can do, you can move the origin point back to geometry and it will keep the local orientation that you assign it to until you change it. So now you can have actually two rotations across the cube because watch, if I move this cursor now to origin, which will reset the orientation, the rotation, right? And move it back to the origin point, but holding out, which will basically prevent it from, you know, inheriting the current origin point orientation, right? So I'm going to move it to select it with alt. Now I got two different rotations in one point, you know, that I can utilize. So watch, alt X is going to be mirroring across my origin point but i can press tab on mirror go to orientation and switch to cursor and my uh, gizmo is going to switch to cursor so now you got two different orientations or rotations in one point you know whenever you need it that is really fucking powerful now in addition to this you can see that rotation of this cube was restored so the local rotation is back which means i can now use gzz to move it on the local axis I apply the rotation, so I reset it to zero, but because we reset this rotation using cursor, now our local rotation is back. So even if you lose your rotation, you apply it by mistake, you can retrieve it that way. If you're going to stock this, right, with this um, custom orientation here built into Blender, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Because, you know, even if I apply, again, rotation of this cube, right, and I can't move it on, you know, on local axis. Local axis is gone again. I can always change the, um, you know, orientation of this cube using local orientations. I can create a local orientation like this, right? But I can actually move my cube on this local orientation again, right? So you can mix and match them and sort of, you know, use them to your advantage in order to basically set the rotation to whatever the fuck you want. And this will impact how you work with mirrors all right well that's it for this video hope we're gonna get some proper ammunition to fight against polygons all right guys well that's it for this one thanks for watching and i see you next one